Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah we can meet again. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah we can meet again in our class. I believe this is the lecture seven of our class, advanced uh, research methodology. And uh, today's topic is the nature of uh, qualitative uh, research. Many of you <coughs> uh, choose uh, quantitative research, but there are still some who, who, who choose uh, qualitative research. Before we continue, um, is there any questions? Please ask uh, lots and lots of questions. I think that's the best way to uh, to study research method by asking lots and lots of questions. Prof, excuse me. Prof, sure. you you said you were going to send us a sample, you know, with the qualitative research one. Is there any dissertation with qualitative research that we can see? No, I said I said uh, we will cover qualitative research the following week, which is today. Oh, I, I oh, didn't okay. say I will send you qualitative uh, research sample. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. Okay. Any other question? Let me repeat. And not at the moment, Professor, as you go. Let me repeat what I said. Uh, for those of you who choose a quantitative research, uh, you should uh, develop your theoretical framework of the study based on the previous research. You should, you should have um, previous uh, research, complete research, or thesis, right? Uh, in order for you to compare and contrast, uh, synthesize what others have done. For you to develop your own theoretical framework, Right, to develop your, your framework, right? It cannot be from, it cannot be from the air. You cannot simply put your DV, your IV without referring to other previous studies. If the framework that you, um, uh, the framework, the theoretical framework of your study must be formed based on previous studies for, for quantitative research, right? For quantitative research, it must be based on uh, theory, and it must be uh, based on uh, expectations, expectations. Okay, I think we discussed in detail in last uh, lecture. Please view the last lecture. I'm just repeating myself. All right. Uh, that's that's okay, Professor. That is good. Thank any, you. Any question, Mr. Irada? Uh, like, as you said, like uh, the co uh, quantitative research should be based on the previous study on the theories. Uh, how do you distinguish that the qualitative research uh, cannot be based on the uh, previous study or the literature or the theory? Can you repeat the question, the last part? Yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, I mean, you focused 
that the qualitative research should be based on uh, previous study and the Quanti theory. Quantitative research. Yeah, yeah, co yeah, co uh, yeah, quantitative research, sorry. Quantitative research should be based on the uh, like previous study and the theories. And how do you distinguish that? Uh, or how ca uh, can we say like, how, how is it different uh, for the for a co qualitative research? Should it not be based on the previous study or theories? Very good question. And uh, we covered already in the last lectures, but let me repeat. Uh, that is a very good question. Okay, uh, quantitative research uh, applies a deductive reasoning. Quantitative research applies deductive re reasoning. Deductive reasoning or deductive analysis means that the researcher starts from the theory. It starts from the theory. The researcher must develop the theoretical framework based on the previous studies. And then the researcher will uh, collect the data, analyze the data, and get the findings of the study. And from the findings, the data, the researcher will test whether the empirical evidence support or reject the um, hypothesis, right? So in other words, That's right. quantitative research um, using deductive reasoning must have the theory first. So the first step is to develop the theory to develop the uh, theoretical framework of the study. Then uh, go out and collect, analyze the data and test uh, whether the data conforms or support the theory or not. So that is the quantitative uh, research approach. On the other hand, for qualitative research uh, that uses uh, inductive reasoning, right? Or inductive analysis, the researcher goes out and collect the data. Uh, from the data, uh, the researcher will analyze the data and then the researcher will develop and come up with theory. the theory. So it's the reverse process. Yeah. Starts with uh, data yeah. first, analyze the data, and then from the data, uh, the researcher comes up with the theory. It is called grounded theory approach. So, very good question, Mr. Sairoda. Every time you come to class, you come up with yeah. good questions. <laughs> yeah, no, so, I know you come up with a very good answer. Uh, yeah, it's really clear now. Yeah, I mean, and the, we can say like the quantitative is a theory based, while the qualitative is uh, uh, is automatically form the theory. Right, it, yeah, it, it develops the theory. That is the main uh, difference, I think. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what you explained. Yeah, very good explanation, Professor. Very good, thank you. So, welcome. So there are many approaches to qualitative research. Uh, qualitative research tend to be more flexible in terms of, uh, you know, collecting the data, uh, asking questions, uh, the, for example, using uh, um, interview method, the the questions are more open mind, more open ended, uh, more flexible. And I would say it is a bit easier, Professor. That's what I think. It is uh, a bit easier. I'm easy not sure about that. 
I'm not sure if it's easier. I'm not sure. <laughs> <coughs> so qualitative research tend to be more flexible and focus on retaining a rich meaning when interpreting when interpreting data. So the data is in the form of text, right? In the form of text. Right, right. Yes. Uh, in the form of words or in the form of sketches, in the form of pictures, in the form of video. So there are many forms. All right. There are many approaches to uh, qualitative data, uh, qualitative research, including grounded theory, ethnography, action research, case study, phenomenology, and narrative research. Let's start with uh, grounded theory. Grounded theory is a research method concerned with uh, generating theory. Okay, start with data. And then from data, analyze the data, get the empirical uh, result. And from that, the researcher will uh, attempt to form the theory. So grounded theory is a research method concerned with generating or coming up with theory, which is grounded in data. The theory comes from the data that the researchers systematically collect and analyze. It's used to uncover uh, social relationships and behaviors of groups known as a social process. Grounded theory is a research method where the researcher develops the theory from the data rather than uh, the reverse. So like uh, Mr. Shairadat asked, um, what's the difference between qualitative and quantitative data? So the main difference is uh, in uh, qualitative data, uh, the purpose is to, to generate theory based on the, the data collected and analyzed. So grounded theory is a research method where the researcher develops the theory from the data. It uses an inductive approach. Inductive approach means that uh, it moves from a specific to the more general. Grounded theory refers to a set of systematic inductive methods for conducting qualitative research aimed towards theory development. So aims towards the, to the development of a theory. Researchers use the term grounded theory to mean the methods of inquiry for collecting and in particular analyzing data. So in grounded theory, common methods of collecting data is interviewing participants with open-ended questions. So the researchers uh, will determine who the respondents are and we'll ask the interviewees or the respondents based on a set of questions we call the interview protocol. So the researchers must uh, uh, come up with an interview protocol, means the set of questions that the researcher wants to ask the interviewees or the respondents. So that's the most common method to interview the participants. The second method is to do the participant observation. Participant observation is uh, when the researcher um, locate himself and uh, participate uh, with the respondents without the respondents knowing that he or she is actually doing a research. 
right? In 19, uh, let me tell you a story. In 19, uh, nine, 19, hmm, 1994, in 1994, I was um, selected as one of the researchers to participate in a qualitative uh, research and and um, one of the method used uh, is participant observation the topic the topic uh, of the research was the masala uh, social the social problem uh, among uh, I forgot the word. Among teenagers, the social problems among you know, teenagers in the state of Kedah. Uh, the, the, the problem of uh, delinquency, the problem of delinquency among the teenagers in the state of Kedah. The research was in um, Bahasa, so it takes time for me to translate. <laughs> All right, it was in 1994. The method that we chose was, among the method was participant observation. So- uh, Professor, sorry for the interruption. What was the topic of the research? Juvenile delinquency, juvenile delinquency uh, in the state of Kedah. The problem of uh, juvenile delinquency in the state of Kedah. Okay, so. All right. Oh. You know, the problems with teenagers, you know. Mm, All right. right, right. So one of the problems was the issue of um, lepa. I don't know the, 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 the term in English. Lepa means the juvenile, they, uh, they waste their times. Um, they waste their times doing nothing and uh, disturbing others. <laughs> Right, disturbing others at a shopping right. complex and at certain uh, hot spots. Right, that's yeah. I one. mean, uh, this type of research, this type of research is mainly based on the observation, isn't it? Participant observation, yeah, 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 that's true. And one of us has to be there, <laughs> has to be there. To do the yeah, lepa, to do the lepa, you know the lepa. Lepa means doing nothing with them, uh, yeah. waste, wasting time and disturbing yeah. others. Yeah, yeah. And then I was funny. Uh, okay, the funny thing is, I was one of I was one of the uh, the researchers selected to to do the participant observation. <laughs> so, so I was, did, did, I was there did for you a couple find of it days boring or? To do the lepa, just sit around in did and mingle, and mingle with the juvenile. I had to be one of the juvenile, right? I had, uh -huh. I had to be and pretend to be one of the uh, juvenile, the teenagers, the problem teenagers. <laughs> right. I was there in yeah. what did you do? spots. Right? What did you do, bro? Good question. I had to wear, uh, I had to wear certain types of uh, <laughs> clothes, right? Not formal clothes. I had to pretend. Yeah. I had to pretend that I was a bad boy. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, where where jeans, where you know. So they, somebody made me wear those, right? But my problem was I was wearing glasses, right? They said, take off the glasses. So I took off the glasses, right? <laughs> I was like blind a little bit. So I was there at a city plaza, yeah, it was a city plaza and city point and, and certain places, right? So I had to participate in the, in the activity of Lepa. Right, and then after a while, I was kicked out of the research group. <laughs> I was kicked out of the research group <laughs> because I did a lousy job. I, I couldn't. Uh, I, I, I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. pretend. I couldn't pretend. They knew I was not. They knew I was uh, not among them. <laughs> so I was. So you were not a naughty teenager, actually. I did a lousy job of pretending to be a lousy teenager. So I was uh, not kicked out. I was, re I was replaced. You didn't by... do well at doing nothing. <laughs> yeah, because the, those um, participants that uh, that I observed, right? They knew that I was not among them. Uh, they call me teacher, teacher, cikgu, teacher. So they knew I was not among them. So I was replaced, not kicked out. Eh? I was replaced by somebody else who did a better job. So I did not finish the study. I was replaced by somebody it, it else. Means, professor, it means you're not a very good... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Professor, it means you're not a very good actor then. <laughs> yeah, I was a lousy actor. <laughs> <laughs> the way I speak, the way I move, uh, you know, I couldn't be a, a juvenile. Uh, yeah. So I, I, yeah, I was not suitable. So they replaced me with uh, my friend who did a much better job. <laughs> All right. So in participant observation, the researcher had to participate in the activities done by the uh, respondent. And the respondent must not know that you are the researcher. Otherwise, their activities and their actions uh, will be biased because they know they are being observed right so they will uh, they will not act normally they will act you know like someone who are being observed all right that is the participant observation or focus groups in focus groups the researcher will um, uh, gather uh, groups two or three or three groups, all right, in one setting, and uh, the researcher can uh, ask uh, them questions uh, or observe their behavior. So that is called uh, focus groups. One of the ways to do focus group is, for example, find uh, two groups, right? find two groups um, uh, and then the researcher will ask questions will moderate the discussions between the two groups and uh, record um, record uh, uh, what, what they say right mm -hmm. and then analyze so uh, I had an experience to do the focus group, but it also didn't work. Uh, in 2012, uh, we tried to study uh, the perception of Shia group and Sunni groups. 
on uh, ibada, on uh, aqida, and certain deeds, certain religious deeds. We try to arrange uh, focus groups. Okay, we try to arrange uh, <coughs> the Shia groups. We uh, together we try to put together Shia and Sunni groups in one setting, and we would like mm. to ask them questions regarding their perceptions on Aqida, mm. Ibadah, and certain uh, religious deeds, but it never materialized. It never materialized because it's very difficult to put together these two groups because you know they don't like each other. Shia don't yeah. like Sunni, Sunnis don't like Shia, they don't want to meet. I just want to ask, you know, how to manage, you know, these two types of Akhida. Yeah. So uh, the we we could not uh, complete the research because there are the there are problems with with interviewing with mm. doing certain things like focus mm -hmm. groups. It's very difficult because they refuse uh, to participate uh, mm -hmm. in the research because they have suspicions. They have certain suspicions, mm -hmm. you know. So to say that uh, uh, qualitative theory is easy, uh, I, I'm not sure <laughs> because there are certain problems, you know. So easy uh, problem, or not depends. Problem. In, in I was go ahead. In, in slide, bro. Okay, grounded theory commonly used the following data collection methods, which is a study of artifact and text. So how we can say about that one in the grounded theory? Right, right, good. So there are certain uh, disciplines uh, who, uh, there are certain disciplines which try to come up with their theory uh, and the data that they use are in the form of artifacts and uh, texts. Um, so, for example, uh, the discipline of um, archaeology, right? Uh, what are the disciplines? Even archaeology, uh, what's the word? Eh? What, what's the discipline, eh, Dr. Sufyan? There are certain dif disciplines that rely heavily on uh, artifacts uh, and texts. I can think of like uh, archaeology, right? There's also what, what yes, is uh, anthropologies? Maybe anthropology. Yeah, those who study, like, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, th there's this place I went to in Keda in. Uh, is it uh, was it Lembah, Lembah Bujang? Sunga, no, Sungai, Sungai Batu. Uh, Where are there are uh, many uh, ancient yeah, but to, to things. Say, uh, I found uh, research. Uh, uh, Sungai Batu, eh? Uh, betul, Lembah Bujang. Uh, Lembah yeah, Bujang, yeah. eh? Lembah Bujang. Yeah, but okay. Go, go ahead, uh, Miss Hamza. No, I was uh, I was I was talking about uh, an anthropologist or oh, the artifact you said. Yeah. Yes, there is this uh, um, historical site I visited in Kedah. It's called Sunga. Sungai, Sungai, but I have forgotten the, the name. Lamba Buddha. But I found uh, uh, people they were collecting uh, art, they were excavating things from. Maybe I've forgotten the name. They were mm -hmm. collecting them and then uh, for research purposes, they were researching the, the soil, the type, and uh, and all that. So I think it 
it falls into that category. Apologies. Yes. Yes. True. Mm. Anthropologists, uh, uh, sociologists, and uh, that kind of discipline. I'm I'm not uh, very familiar with that, but there are some kind of disciplines that rely heavily on the artifacts and texts. Um, they they want to know what was going on uh, sometimes uh, in the past, right? For example, bilakah kedatangan Hindu ke tanah Melayu, for example. So they rely on the artifacts mm -hmm. and, and texts. Bilakah kedatangan Islam yeah. ke tanah Melayu, mm -hmm. uh, some, that type of discipline. But, uh, prop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for the we call it text analysis, text analysis at the text analysis method. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Usually, I, I'm not sure, but my friend from the history, yeah, field from history or yes. the language field use these techniques. Yeah. History field and language field and bahasa Melayu and ataupun sejarah tu kan dia guna banyak guna text analysis lah kan. Right. Betul betul. Yeah, dia dia bidang apa? Eh? Awak saya itu seorang uh, bahasa Melayu gunakan teks analisis contohnya ucapan ucapan perdana menteri uh, yeah. perdana menteri bertukar right? perdana menteri lah kan. Yeah. Artifak ni macam uh, kalau saya seorang lagi buat uh, apa ni sejarah kedah lah. sejarah kedah tua apa semua dia melalui buku-buku ataupun yang ada dekat museum tu dia buat analisis teks tu lah. Betul. Saya nampak tu lah kan. Yang artifact saya boleh jumpa lagi. Boleh jumpa lagi orang buat artifact lah. Tak pernah jumpa lagi orang pergi gali lik, tulang ke apa. Tak pernah jumpa lagi lah. Ya, dia Prof lembah bujang. Jumpa, dia lembah bujang kalau doktor senang nanti boleh 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 pergi. Uh, di area Melbuk, di lembah bujang. dia Kita boleh lihat beberapa tempat tu dia, dia buat sekatan kan. Dia buat sekatan. Uh, dia gali tanah tu. Uh, dan dia jumpa artifak lama lah. Uh, Ustaz Ziza boleh cerita sikit tak? Tentang ni artifak-artifak di Lembah Bujang tu. Banyak saya pun uh, pernah lalu lah. Pernah tengok uh, beberapa uh, pengkaji. Di situ. Prof, uh, sebenarnya saya tak, saya tak sampai ke situ. Okay. Uh, tapi memang hari tu uh, tim Lembaga Zakat bawa dia pergi sana. Yeah. Saya tak sampai lagi. Okey. Jadi saya nak terang pun tak boleh juga lah. Saya tak pasti kalau Ustaz Ustaz Suraidi ikut Ustaz Suraidi ikut DP. Ha, saya memang tak tahu. Ustaz Suraidi pernah pergi ya? tengok artifak di Lembah Bujang. Ha, tempat dia berkorek-korek tu tak pergi bro. Yang hmm. dekat Lembah Bujang betul ya? Uh, apa atas bukit tu lah tu biasa pergi. Hmm. Lama juga, mereka korek-korek lama-lama tu Lepas tu, dia adalah candi-candi dia tu yu, Lepas lama-lama yeah. So, mereka apa? Mereka berus, tak tahu Kalau tengok konsep tu, dia berus-berus sampai jumpa lah barang-barang lama tu yeah. So, kat situ ada museum yeah. Kat situ ada yeah. museum tu Dan saya pernah pergi, saya pernah pergi satu rumah orang tua dekat area-area sana yang kawasan rumah dia tu digazetkan sebagai kawasan uh, artifak uh, uh, Jadi dia di, dibagi pampasan lah Sebab ada kesan sejarah peninggalan apa ni Zaman Hindu kot <laughs> Di dekat rumah dia So dia dapat uh, gantian lah uh, Di satu kawasan dekat dengan rumah dia lah Gali tengok ada banyak lah peninggalan zaman zaman Hindu katanya. <laughs> Wallahu alam. So artifak um, adalah satu uh, bentuk uh, uh, kita kata evidence uh, satu bentuk evidence uh, yang pengkaji cuba cari uh, dengan cara menggali dan mencari penemuan 
tentang barang-barang peninggalan lama lah, eh. untuk dikaji tentang sejarah-sejarah yang lama. Contoh kedatangan Hindu ke Negeri Kedah, kedatangan Islam uh, di Terengganu, uh, kedatangan Islam ke Negeri Kedah dan sebagainya. Lah. Dan juga uh, teks, uh, uh, teks ini juga biasanya merujuk kepada teks yang lama lah. Uh, mungkin ada teks uh, yang yang lama kan yang boleh dibuat uh, analisis yang dipanggil teks analisis. Oh, teks analisis uh, uh, sangat meluas lah dan boleh digunakan dalam pelbagai bidang. Sebagai contohnya, uh, ada seorang buat PhD ya, tentang pemikiran Ibn Khaldun. Jadi pemikiran Ibn Khaldun. Jadi dia menggunakan teks analisis dekat, dengan mengkaji penulisan Ibn Khaldun uh, dan juga ya, the original, the original penulisan oleh the original writings of Ibn Khaldun and also the texts uh, written on Ibn Khaldun. So this one is uh, qualitative research. Okay. Any question on uh, grounded theory? I'm not sure uh, if it's easy. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I'm not very familiar with this um, uh, grounded theory. I've never, um, I've never completed any any research using the grounded theory. I tried, but uh, but uh, I I couldn't complete. All right. The next one is ethnography. Ethnography is a study of the people. It's a study of the people in their environment. <coughs> Through a method such as participant observation and face-to-face -face interviewing. So in ethnography, the researcher uh, go to the original setting of the people that they want to study. Okay. Uh, when I attended a research methodology workshop a long time ago, in 2000, um, hmm, in 1999, I attended a research methodology workshop organized by USM. There was uh, one professor from Australia who gave a talk on uh, ethnography. So he told us this story. I'm not sure if it's true or not, but he told us this story. There was a, a group of uh, researchers uh, who came to Kelantan, who came to Kelantan, one of the states in uh, Malaysia. And the researcher was from a Western country. I, I'm, I'm, I cannot recall from UK or from which country, I cannot recall. But the researcher is a Westerner, right? The group of researcher uh, consists of people from Western countries. I cannot recall from which country. So they came to Kelantan, right? One of the state in Kedah, not in Malaysia, sorry. So they wanted to examine the behavior of the Muslims from the time when they wake up from sleep until 
Mm. They went to bed, right? So the everyday activities, right? This is told to me during the workshop. I'm not sure if it's true or not. Wallahu alam. So um, uh, the researcher, the group of researchers, okay, they spent a couple of months. Uh, I think uh, they spent about, no, they spent about one month, yeah. 30 to 40 days, something like that. This is in, really in the village in Klantan, right? And uh, what they found was, the conclusion was, these people do not work hard. These people are lazy. Because uh, during their observation, these people, when they, after, after the morning prayer, after Subo, uh, they went to the farm, and then they came back and they slept, right? And then they perform <laughs> prayer, they perform prayer, and then they slept again, <laughs> right? And then um, after the prayer, uh, they didn't do much, right? Some of them went back to the farm. Some of them did uh, some activities. And then at night, they ate. And they pray, they pray a lot, and then they slept. So it goes every day like that. So the conclusion was the, the people are not productive. They are among the not productive and lazy people. I, I, I won't say that they are not a productive professor. I would say they are like relaxed people, contented people. So easy, easy to move like. Uh, yeah. I, I would say that uh, the people were, uh, I mean, the finding of the researchers uh, may not be the correct because sometimes when the people are contented, they are relaxed, they are not running after the world. So they keep doing their work this way. That's what I believe. Like they are offering prayer five times a day, doing their work as well, relaxing as well. So yeah. I think they are not lazy people. So I, I don't agree with the researcher that they were the lazy people. <laughs> I'm just okay. saying. Okay. So, so what I want to point out is the limitation in ethnography is that the researcher comes from a different background, right? And they come to the certain setting uh, and they analyze <coughs> the data based on their perception. You are right, uh, Mr. Hamza. Uh, sorry, uh, Mr. Said. So their conclusion is based on yeah, their yeah, perception, you. right? So without yeah, understanding, yeah. some of them have problem because they fail or they, they could not uh, understand the surrounding. And most of the time when they observed was during the month of Ramadan. Yeah, so that is, that is one of the reasons because during the month of Ramadan, Muslim people more concentrate on Ibadah. They don't concentrate on uh, on the you know the on the worldly things and uh, running after the money or working. So that may be the reason because they have different perception. They think like uh, the Western people think that they are born to work, 
but uh, Muslim people think they are born to ibadah and work as well. So, so, so the point, the, 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 point that the professor are... wanted to stress is that in ethnography, the researcher analyzes the data with a bias, some type of bias uh, perception, because uh, maybe the Western concept is not the same as the uh, the the Eastern concept, Eastern right? Concept. Yeah, and uh, they didn't understand, uh, you know, where, where that uh, that when they observe. Most of the time, they observe the activities during the month of Ramadan. So, uh, yeah, so that, that's correct. a problem with eth ethnography. So, yeah, even, even in Pakistan, professor, you know, during the month of Ramadan, all the offices, they reduce their work hours. Right. So the work hours are even reduced. Uh, even in offices, uh, in the, every places, school timing is reduced, office yeah. hours are reduced. So, yeah, even in Ramadan, like the Muslim people, more concentrate on Ibadah. Yeah. So, so that's, that that's ethnography. The so, ethnography is a study of people in their environment through methods such as participant observation and face to face interviewing. Classic ethnographic research involves a detailed description of the whole culture outside of the researcher's country of origin. Right, so, I also met with uh, one researcher from Australia uh, who, who spent uh, at that time about four months in Cameron Highland studying the people of origins living in Cameron Highland, Orang Asli, the people, the people of origin in, in uh, Cameron Highland. Uh, he's, he's from Australia, and he spent at that time about four months uh, living along with the, with the people of uh, origin, right? Uh, trying to understand the behavior of, of the people, uh, lived with the people of origin for four months and could, could speak, and could speak and could uh, do certain uh, things like the people of origin. So that is the ethnography. Usually the, the researcher from a different country of origin try to study the yeah. people in their original environment. Mm -hmm. The, mm -hmm. all right. So ethnography is a qualitative, qualitative study of social interactions, behaviors, and perceptions within certain groups, okay? For example, within the people of origin, within teams, organizations, and communities. Ethnography, descriptive study of a particular human society or the process of making such a study. Contemporary ethnography is based on almost entirely on field work. Field work means um, the researchers um, go to the setting and uh, observe the setting, uh, sometimes act as a non-participant, sometimes act as a participant when they observe and uh, requires the complete immersion of anthropologists in the culture mm -hmm. and everyday life of the people who are the subject of the study. So usually they uh, live, they live among the respondents uh, 
sometimes uh, they can choose to be uh, participant and some of them choose to be non participant in the uh, activities of the people that they observe. Any question on uh, ethnography? No, uh, it's quite clear, Professor. Uh, I mean, the, if, if a research belongs to a particular uh, uh, like ethnicity, I mean, uh, some uh, particular group or some community living in a certain place. So that is that is some that is more about the ethnography, isn't it? I mean, yes. it is ethnic research. We can say ethnic research. Exactly. Yes, it's a study of certain ethnics or certain people, certain group of people. Yes. Yeah. Usually, unique, yeah, group yeah, yeah, unique, unique group of people. Usually, unique group of people. people you know? Yes. Like here, we have uh, people yeah, of yeah, origin. Yeah, yeah. People of origin yeah, who I, yeah, are still, living, yeah. who are still living in their old style. <clears throat> right, right, yeah. All right. Uh, can we have like a 10 minutes break? Inshallah, we will continue. Yeah. Boleh, okay. boleh, probably. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Sleepy, yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, sleepy. Minum kopi. <laughs> Masri, how are you, sir? Are you okay? Alhamdulillah, brother. How are you? Yeah, I am fine. Yeah, yeah. How are you? So how's everything going? Yeah, yeah right. We have Alhamdulillah, everything is great. So settle everything. I mean, that is there any other issues? Yeah, I have. I will discuss with you, inshallah. Uh, okay, when you have some time, please let me know. I have some issues to discuss. Inshallah. Inshallah, and I hope, and I, uh, I know you've been very helpful to me always. So, inshallah, you will help me, uh, like, uh, in solving, resolving my issues. So, so, uh, you know, like, Masri, like, uh, uh, I know, I, I know you know 10 minutes break, isn't it? It's 10 minutes break. So, I don't want to spoil you. And Saputra, how are you, brother? Are you getting well? Because you were sick, I think, and we have a discussion as well, isn't it? Yeah. Last time. Yes, Alhamdulillah. And feel healthy. And this brother Abbas. How about yeah, Afghanistan? Can't... And how about new Prime Minister of Malaysia? <laughs> Mr. Masri. Mr. And Malaysia have a new Prime Minister. Mr. Oradat.
السلام عليكم عليكم السلام برو سنيا عندنا <laughs> okay, any questions before we continue? Okay, we discuss the uh, approach of uh, grounded theory, ethnography. Then the next approach is uh, action mm -hmm. research. Please ask questions. Mr. Sad uh, Irada. All right, action research is an uh, interactive inquiry process that uh, balances problem solving actions implemented in a collaborative context with data driven combined analysis or research to underlying certain causes enabling future personnel personal and organizational change predictions so this is another type of, uh, another approach of uh, qualitative research. Action research creates knowledge based on inquiries conducted within specific and often practical contexts. Action research aims to learn through action then that uh, then uh, leads to personal or professional uh, development. So this is another type of uh, action research. Uh, action research is, is uh, carried out in many fields, including uh, education. In Malaysia, the, the teachers uh, are encouraged and sometimes obligated to, to do the action research. Uh, sometimes action research also involve uh, certain uh, individuals from the community. Uh, anybody who has involved in action research, Dr. Sufian, pernah pernah buat kajian tindakan action research. Tak pernah lah, tapi ada kawan saya tu dia dari psikologi dalam psikologi, dia ada buat action research, contohnya dalam kelas dia tu dia cuba masukkan elemen-elemen, contohnya dia akan provok kepada pelajar dia dia akan tengok sebelum provok dan selepas provok, apa yang berlaku adakah pelajar-pelajar dia bergaduh dia, dia orang psikologi saya cuba faham apa yang dia buat daripada dia cerita macam tu lah dia, dia akan gunakan t-test lah <coughs> statistical tu t-test contohnya, sebelum Uh, dia masukkan intervention ataupun uh, provokatif punya elemen tu apakah dia orang punya pemahaman ataupun uh, macam mana kerjasama lepas dia masukkan provok tu apa itu jadi terhadap kerjasama mereka itulah uh, tu saya nampak itu action research yang dia buatlah dia cerita kat saya kan uh, tapi dia kata kena hati-hatilah kalau kita lebih sangat bagi provokatif dia orang pelajar-pelajar tu akan bergaduh terlampau teruklah <laughs> dia yang dicerita kat saya tapi dekat, dekat Malaysia ni macam action research ni untuk PhD tak tak saya rasa tak not acceptable kot. Yeah. For action research untuk buat untuk PhD is not acceptable. Saya rasa yeah. lah. Banyak orang discuss benda ni lah kata action research kat Malaysia ni dah tak tak boleh untuk PhD sebab dia macam 
Ha, simple macam tu lah. So dia hmm. paling kurang pun kena pergi grounded theory lah. Grounded theory for qualitative hmm. lah. Ha. Yeah, that's right. Tapi menarik lah dia cerita kat saya macam mana dia buat action research tu kat saya kan. Dia cerita kan. Dia buat dalam kelas dia kan. <laughs> contoh lah kan contoh. Usually action research is uh, quite simple and uh, I agree with Dr. Sufyan. Uh, using action research alone is not uh, considered sufficient for reaching PhD level because of the nature of action research, uh, which is uh, usually uh, seem like um, quite uh, easy and, and simple. So many uh, examiners are uh, Uh, in the opinion that action, action research alone is not sufficient to reach the PhD level. The, uh, nowadays, it's quite popular among school teachers. For example, uh, okay, for example, uh, a teacher uh, uh, wants to study the problem Uh, of uh, students in learning mathematics, right? So first, they try to identify why certain uh, students have problems understanding mathematics, for example, right? So identify the problems and then uh, try to do the uh, action research try to uh, collect the data and analyze uh, to understand the underlying causes. Why some students uh, have trouble uh, absorbing or understanding and solving the uh, mathematics problems, right? So they, they want to know the causes, the underlying causes. And then, Assalamualaikum uh, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mr. Sa'irada, where are you? You have gone missing. <laughs> okay, uh, welcome back. Ahlan wa sahlan. All right. So, uh, this is just an oh, example. I have uh, some internet students, issues. Students, uh, uh, sorry. Teachers trying to understand the underlying causes of certain problems. For example, why some students cannot comprehend mathematics, why some students are weak in mathematics, for example. So they try to do the research to, to understand the underlying causes uh, and then try to uh, take certain actions based on the findings. Uh, So that's the type of uh, action research. Action research creates knowledge based on inquiries uh, conducted within specific and practical contexts. So they, they try to analyze the student's uh, behavior uh, to understand why they are weak in uh, mathematics, for example, so that future actions uh, can be done to, to improve the performance of uh, the student's performance in, in, uh, uh, in uh, exam, in, in a mathematics exam. So action research aims to learn through action that uh, leads to personal or professional development so that the teachers can uh, improve uh, their, their teaching um, pedagogy, their teaching methods uh, in the future to increase uh, the performance of students in a mathematics uh, exam. That, that is uh, uh, an example of action research. Of course, there are many more types of action research. Usually, uh, Dr. Sufyan, in uh, 
qualitative research, they combine several uh, approach. One, one, one approach sometimes is not uh, sufficient to, to reach uh, the level of PhD. Uh, if, oh, okay. if, if, if combined with several other uh, approaches, then uh, it can be considered, right? Sometimes they combine with the quantitative, <laughs> make like <laughs> mismated. Like. Yeah, I, I've I've read uh, some uh, PhD thesis that combine um, uh, qualita qualitative and quantitative, um, and they pass, right? They they pass, uh, but uh, this is just my personal opinion. When they combine, the I find that the qualitative method is uh, quite shallow and uh, quantitative also is not deep enough <laughs> so that, so that's what I, I found so far yes I, I agree with you prof my my friend also do like that where uh, in the qualitative they just do uh, interview for five people and then for the quantitative, they just do a very simple analysis for SPSS. So for mixed method, almost in Malaysia, it will become like that. Yeah, <laughs> <Okay>. but, <laughs> yeah but, they do mana mana pun tak tak sebenarnya tak mencapai level lah. Tak, they do dua tak. Mungkin separuh siapa separuh jadi satu. Dia fikir <laughs> jadi tak tahu lah, tak cakap. <laughs> but but they pass. <laughs> but just my personal opinion is uh, if you if you do mixed method, uh, it's okay, but you still have to do properly. Uh, I, I've read some uh, thesis Mr. that, can I, you know. Uh, can I ask a question? Sure, sure, Mr. Sairada, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, if a mixed method, is there any particular research that need uh, both the method I mean, if it needs both the method, like uh, quantitative and qualitative both, so it may be some, something like uh, an extra expertise, isn't it? Or it, it, or it is considered as the weakness when a student use both the method, is it a weakness or it is an expertise? Or like, uh, uh, or any particular research may need both the method. I'm, I'm asking regarding that. Uh, good, good question. Uh, number one, it depends on your objective of the research. So some objective requires a, a quantitative method. Uh, other objective requires a quantitative, sorry, qualitative methods. So there are some uh, PhD thesis who combine both quanti and quali uh, based on their a research objective, uh, which, which is okay. However, uh, I should stress that you know the use of uh, mixed method. Uh, if, if they do both, then they must do it uh, properly uh, in both methods. Right, For example, right, if you do right. quantitative <laughs> method. You uh, and you do, um, for example, multiple regression analysis, right? So you have when you do multiple regression analysis, you have to really follow all the steps. And I, I read some uh, PhD thesis that uh, they did not follow all the steps in multiple regression. I think. Uh, for example, the right. most important step is in regression analysis is the diagnostic checking part. The diagnostic checking, for example, to check for the existence of multicollinearity, hetero heteroscedasticity, uh, and uh, normality and uh, missing data, outliers. They didn't do that part. They just simply uh, <laughs> report the, um, uh, uh, the results, you know, the, uh, right. the value of beta, the value of T statistics, uh, because 
to me, if you don't do the diagnostic checking, the implication is that the that the findings might not be valid because you you did not check your data, <laughs> right? And then um, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. So it, it's okay to like. do a mixed method, but uh, you you have to do properly. You have to follow the procedure. If if you do PLSM, okay. for example, I understand. You. You have to do all the procedure. Uh, we will go through the procedure for doing a quantitative uh, method. Uh, and then, of course, there are some professors. What, like what? Uh, what? Uh, there are some professors who are in the opinion that, uh, for example, if you do quantitative methods uh, using a questionnaire, for example, there are limitations to questionnaire, right? For example, a response bias. Uh, and then another example is the information from the questionnaire uh, sometimes are limited. Uh, so they ask the students, the PhD students, to complement with a, a qualitative approach. So this is a subject okay. matter. Uh, to me, whether the quantitative approach alone is enough or not, whether the result is valid or not, you, you can check. You can check, for example, uh, if you use PLSM, you can check using adjusted R square, using the predictive uh, coefficient. And if you use a uh, multiple regression analysis, of also you can check the goodness of fit uh, using adjusted R square and other measures. If it's proven that, that your model is not uh, sufficient in the sense that the explanatory power is weak, then you can add uh, the qualitative uh, method. But if you do qualitative method, of course, you have to follow the procedure All right. also. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. I got it. Thank so you. Some, some people, they say, oh, I do the interview, right? All right. If you do interview, still you have to follow the procedure of doing interview. Right. You cannot just say, uh, go and, um, you know, interview. You have to have the interview protocols. You have to do the analysis uh, you have you need to explain the methods of analysis whether you are doing thematic analysis or other types of uh, analysis uh, so the point is do it properly <laughs> do it according to the uh, <laughs> procedure of research method Simply don't just do it. Yeah, yeah, I got it. You have to follow the procedure, whether you are doing a quantitative or qualitative research. Don't do it halfway, like Dr. Sophia said. You know, don't do it halfway. Buat situ sikit, buat sini sikit kan, macam tak cukup masak. So do it. Um, uh, the proper way, follow all the procedure of uh, research. Uh, I agree that, you know, yeah, uh, it... some people, you know, they have different views. <coughs> uh, uh, professors in uh, quant uh, qualitative research, they tend to say that, you know, quantitative research have limitations and uh, they prefer qualitative research. 
So those professors from Kuali, they, they have that opinion. And professors from Kuanti, you know, will have a different opinions. Mm, so, so that is a subjective. It depends correct, on, yeah. on uh, which uh, background the, of the professors. And of course, in certain universities, there are Dr. professors Yusuf. who are well versed in quantitative. There are professors who are well versed in qualitative. So, which one is better? Uh, uh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> which one is better? It, it depends on the the objective of the study, on the discipline of study. Some discipline, you know, it's better to do qualitative study. Some discipline is all right to use a quantitative study. Mr. Mokhlis, you want to ask questions? But, may I? Yeah, Bututi. Yes, I, uh, I, I have been involved in uh, media content analysis. Good, good. Hello? Yes, yes. Share with us. Hello? Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes, I've been involved. I have been involved in uh, media content analysis. And um, essentially, it involves counting uh, the number of media as uh, output is quantitative. Then uh, we also involve a qualitative aspect uh, and ask key informants. Now, the results sometimes uh, may, may, may come out uh, uh, in ways that not explain what you are observing on the ground. And you need to reinforce that with the key informant interviews. Now, my question is, how would you classify media content analysis? Mm. Uh, uh, okay. Good question. We cannot hear you, Mr. Moklis. Yeah, it stopped. Yes. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, yes. I. Uh, that, that's my submission. Ca can I? Can I repeat the question? Yeah. Can, can you repeat the question? Yes. Uh, how would you? Yes, please. How can you? classify media con content analysis uh, majorly? Is it quantitative or qualitative? Because I'm dealing with stories in, in media. I'm counting them for various aspects, uh, for, the, for how many times a story mm -hmm. is told about Islamic banking, uh, who are the main speakers in those stories. And then when I observe all the due protocols intercoder reliability tests um, uh, and so following. Uh, so where would you majorly classify it? Is it, is it quantitative or qualitative? Good question. Uh, yeah, Professor, I was also going to ask the same type of question like. Good question. Uh, sorry. Yeah, uh, you know, Professor, I was also going, I think like the research, the nature of the research more decide about what type of uh, method is needed. I mean, the nature of the research, I think is uh, uh, basically is uh, uh, decide that what so sort of uh, uh, method should be more applicable. Uh, and my, uh, that's what, that, that is the question I was going to even ask. Mr. Moholis asked the question. My question is very, uh, very close to it, yeah. 
And I believe like the nature of the uh, research basically decide what should be the most appropriate uh, the method of research, either it is quantitative or qualitative. That's what I believe. Uh, anyway, uh, Professor, you put your your opinion. Okay. Good, Excuse good, me. good question. Excuse me. Can, can I answer the question first? Excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Excuse me, bro. Okay, yes, thank you. Quantity. Go ahead. Uh, maybe I would like to you add, you know, the question. So three of us probably will have similar question. You know, uh, uh, how decide, how to decide, you know, using the analysis, uh, same SPSS and the other, you know, and another else. Can you teach me, teach us, you know, which one the right one, you know, for the, you know, uh, analysis? Because, you know, we, to me, which, you know, graduated in 1997, 1991, if using SPS at the time, probably still SPS number two or three, no, it's become SPS 26, 25, yeah. So it's really hard. So. Uh, can you tell us which one the right one if we have case like this and that and then you better you advise or oh, you better using Sam using SPS number what else so can I can we it would, it would now yeah. SPS uh, version 28 <laughs> I don't know <laughs> it is questioning really is a good question <laughs> I don't know you know <laughs> Honestly, honestly, you know, so that's why, you know, I want to learn from here, from you, you know. Okay, all right. Tuti, you are asking very good question, you know. Very, and good, very good question. Good yeah, I think what I heard two of you, the one from Mr. Mukles for the, you know, media analysis, media content analysis. Are you working in the public relation consultation? Uh, re repeat that, please. Are you working in the public relation consultations? You are dealing with the media research content no, analysis. No, no. I'm, uh, I'm investigating the use of um, advocacy communi communication in uh, the promotion of Islamic banking in Uganda. Yeah, right. And as, so part, of, and as part of my approach and methods, I would yeah, like to use media content analysis yeah, by reviewing. Uh, yeah, certain media outputs. Mm. Yeah, that used to be, you know, for the work, the, the working, the job of the public yeah. relation is always very, very good topic, yeah. uh, Mr. Mukhlis. Mashallah, very mashallah. Good topic. Well, we are also running, running uh, short of time now, is it? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> what time is it? Okay. Still ten o'clock. <laughs> yeah. It's almost times up. Yeah, <laughs> Almost finished, Prof. We we started at ten. Can we finish at one o'clock? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let me answer. Boleh, Prof. Boleh, boleh, boleh. Let me answer, uh, Mr. Muflis. Uh, uh, he's uh, familiar with media content uh, analysis. I would call that uh, as an instrument, right? Media content analysis is an instrument. It can be mm. quanti, it can be quali. Okay. It is mm. quantitative if uh, the data is anal analyzed and uh, formed into numbers, which can yes. be analyzed, uh, which can be analyzed using numbers. So yes. media content analysis can be quantitative if the data is in the form of numbers, which yes. can be analyzed. On the other hand, media content analysis also can be qualitative if the data is in the form of text or in the form of words without converting to numbers. So it can be both. Similarly, uh, somebody asked me before, uh, 
uh, interview is an approach of quantitative or qualitative. So my answer is the same. Interview is uh, an instrument, right? This is an, a tool. It is a tool or instrument to collect data, just like media content. Analysis is a tool or instrument to collect data. So right. interview right. can be quantitative in, and it can also be qualitative. Interview is quantitative if um, the data is transformed into numbers. Okay, for example, a researcher goes out and collect data by interviewing respondents. Um, and then based on the um, uh, answers or the response from the interviewees, the researcher then, for example, uh, <coughs> Uh, make the transcription, make the transcription means uh, type everything that uh, was said by the interviewees, right? And then the researcher can input uh, the transcription into NVivo. And then NVivo will analyze those response in uh, numbers, for example, three respondents give this answer, four respondents give this answer, and Vivo can transform the interviews into numbers or frequencies. Then it is uh, uh, it is uh, quantitative. However, if the interview uh, is transcripted, is written, and analyzed in text form, right? Without <clears throat> giving any numbers, then it is qualitative. So it can, even interview can be quantitative and it can be qualitative. Right, right, yes, Professor. <laughs> And like um, <coughs> uh, Mr. Said Iradat said, it depends on your objective of the research, whether yes. you want to use a qualitative or quantitative, right? Yes, that's that's what that is what that that's what was my question. You are correct. So, uh, a simple way to understand whether it's Quanti or quali is this. If the data is transformed into numbers, then it is quanti. Mm. If the data is in the form of text or words without any numbers, then it is quali. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. Right. Yeah. Clear, clear. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Mm. I, I think I Thank got it very much. right. That is a question yeah. that I have not been asking, but this answer gives me the right answer also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good explanation. I, I think, uh, I think uh, what I've realized that uh, if you feel that your inquiry or your study is uh, better, it, it will have a, a more meaningful, according to you, the researcher, a more meaningful, um, uh, or it will be meaningful and beneficial in uh, qualitatively, or better be told in, uh, in, 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 in text. I think you can choose to, to go with qualitative. But I think also if uh, you go in quanti, and at the same time you feel that the text is better, it's a better way to tell your story, I think you could also lose uh, somehow, accordingly, I think. So it's a choice of the researcher to go quality or quality, depending on his topic and how he feels it, his inquiries will be uh, impactful to the society. I think that's what uh, I answered. 
Very good, Mr. Hamza. Uh, let me add one more thing. When you do qualitative, for example, you analyze uh, interview, right? Um, the transcription must be analyzed. You cannot uh, write whatever uh, the interviewee said in your analysis. You cannot put the raw data in your analysis. Let me repeat. If you use an uh, interview, for example, right? What you need to do is you make a recording, right? After recording, you have to make transcription. Means you need to type everything that was said by the respondents or by the interviewees. Next step, you need to analyze, okay? The analysis is written in your thesis, but not the transcription not the transcription. You must analyze first before you report. Let me elaborate. Okay, for example, first respondent, he says, uh, in my opinion, the uh, Islamic banking is uh, uh, expanding and it is it, it, it is contributing to the development of the economy in Malaysia. <clears throat> okay, so what the researcher said, he just transcribed everything, including the <clears throat> <clears throat> and he reports. You know, um, so um, that is the wrong way of reporting interviews. The transcription is for you, not for the readers. What you should do is you should report something like this based on the interview done on 21st of August 2021. The first respondent. Uh, uh, were in the opinion that uh, Islamic banking contributes to the development of the economy in Malaysia. So that's what you report, not the raw data, not the transcription, because I've seen a thesis that reports, including the coughing. <clears throat> <laughs> the coughing is reported in the analysis. No, that, that is for you. You read the whole interview and then you analyze. Then you report in one paragraph or two. You don't put everything that the person said in your thesis. Correct. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that, that is a mistake that I found that the student uh, wrote. Uh, this is not a Unisham student. I was uh, an examiner to examine a thesis from other institutions. And the student reported no, professor, everything, we, Professor, we will not put any. Have, we will not put any coughing in our uh, thesis, inshallah. <laughs> You need, I mean, you need to analyze first, right? The, the raw data of interview, you, you keep it to yourself because the, re the reader uh, is interested in your analysis of the data. The data is useless if it's not analyzed, right? So you right. don't put yes. the useless data, the coughing, everything uh, in, in the findings. You just report your analysis of the, of the data, in this case, the interview.
just uh, so I just uh, remind because I've seen those those uh, type of thesis. <laughs> so the thesis is of course very thick because oh. the student put everything, including the coughing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the, and hmm, H M M M hmm, maybe the respondent was doing something like hmm, and then he also put H M M M M M in the analysis. No need. You just analyze the data and give us your analysis on the uh, interview. All right. Uh, let's answer Bututi. Yeah. Yeah. What should, what kind of uh, statistical uh, analysis yeah. that we want to use? Yeah. Um, in my opinion, uh, simultaneous equation modeling is better than multiple regression analysis. Mm. Okay. Uh, we will uh, discuss this in the future uh, class. Uh, because yeah, of you. the constraints uh, or the limitations of multiple regression analysis. Okay. So my recommendation is to use simultaneous equation modeling. Same, yeah. Same, yeah. Because yeah. of the strength mm -hmm. uh, of SAM. Now, mm -hmm. uh, there are two common uh, analysis of SAM. One is called PLSM, yeah. uh, partial least squares simultaneous equation modeling. Mm -hmm. The other one is uh, AMOS, SAM. Uh, I forgot the full name. And there is a third one. Which one you choose? I don't know yet. Uh, at this stage, um, either, either one is okay. You mm. can choose PLSM. You can choose AMOS, SAM. And you can choose another one, Doctor Sifan. What's what's the other one? Uh, I only know Amos <laughs> PLS. Yeah, there is a third one. I forgot the name. So we can. The most common is PLS and Amos. So which one is better? Uh, let me ask you, Honda and Toyota. Which one is better? Honda <laughs> Toyota. Toyota. Oh, okay. don't know. Some yet. people Toyota. say Toyota. Right? Toyota for me. Yeah. Some Depend. people, some people they prefer Honda. Yeah. So, uh, PLS or Amos, you can choose any. Okay. Either one is okay. The one that you are mm -hmm. familiar with. So mm -hmm. what's the advantage of Amos? Number one is free. Right, Dr. Sufyan. Free? What do you mean? Yeah, it's free. Amos it's included is free. in SPSS. Amos oh. is free, right? Uh, you can ask somebody to download for you. OK. PLSM uh, is paid. Mm -hmm. OK. The free version of PLS you cannot use mm. because the free version of PLS only allows 100 observations. Mm. All right. So usually for PhD level, it requires more than 300 observations. So you have to use the paid version of PLS. Okay. So if you want it free, you can use Amos, um, all right? You need to learn. Yeah. Of, of course, PLS also, you need to learn. Uh, for PLS, it is, it's not free. The free version, you can use for pilot tests. Mm -hmm. 
right? The mm. free version, because it only allows 100 uh, observation. Mm. Uh, for the actual analysis, if your the observation is more than 100, you need to pay. Mm. But uh, they give you one month free trial. Mm. So you have to be smart if you want to use PLSM. <laughs> Suppose you want to use PLSM. Once your, the data is ready, then you download the free trial version. Okay. They give you 30 days mm. and you have to finish within 30 days. If everything is ready, you can analyze within 30 days. Right? And if you want to use again, they ask you to pay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, I, mean, I, 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 can, I can tell you one thing to 2T, Professor, if you allow me. Like, go ahead. Can, yeah, yeah, 2T, you know what you can do? Like, suppose before uh, you finish your free version 30th, just uh, finish it on 27th and change your pass, change your email address. <laughs> find up with a different email address and get another 30 days free. Okay. Cheating. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, sorry, I can. Can I ask you some questions, Prof. Yusuf? Sure. Go ahead. Thank Dr. you. Mutiara, go ahead. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Dr. Yusuf, uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Good morning, friends. Uh, in this morning, I want to ask about uh, the research method for my. Uh, thesis my dissertation uh, because oh, oh, I will uh, using a comparative study between Indonesia and Malaysia, uh, especially for the role of uh, Badan Arbitrasi Syariah Nasional or Basharnas in Indonesia uh, with uh, the Basharnas at Kuala Lumpur. Uh, so uh, uh, in this uh, in this research, uh, I do so want to uh, analyze some. Uh, uh, I will use a case study. Why? Because uh, I must uh, analyze uh, or I must explore some uh, cases that handled by Basharnas in Indonesia and uh, Basharnas at Kuala Lumpur. So I will, uh, it is uh, easy for me if I can compare it, how about the effectiveness of this uh, uh, board uh, to handle about uh, Sariah contract law. So. Uh, maybe I will uh, mixing or blending between comparative study and case study. Is there a possible, uh, Professor Yusuf? Thank you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a good strategy. Um, in uh, Malaysia, we have uh, uh, SAC, Shariah Advisory Council of Bank Negara Malaysia. And um, the limitation is to reach the members, uh, the members of the SAC, Sharia Advisory Council. I think in Indonesia, you, didn't, you don't have problem, right? You, you know, I think so. <laughs> you know the, you can- I didn't know better about the, but I have a senior at UNISAM and at a faculty of the University of Indonesia, uh, Muhammad Hussein. Pak Husin uh, uh, was our uh, senior, but uh, Pak Husin as a part of uh, MU uh, as a Basharnas, and uh, he oh. know uh, well with the leader of the Good. head, uh, uh, Pak Husin. Yeah. Good. So, uh, Pak Husin will uh, give me some sources, some uh, uh, expert from uh, Basharnas and from MUI, which one that uh, I can interview uh, with uh, the expert of uh, that case about Basharnas and about dispute settlement of uh, some cases handled by Basharnas. Good. Uh, for, for members of Sharia Advisory Council, mm -hmm. um, we have uh, Professor Asmadi, who is, who is an ex-member of Sharia Advisory Council. We have uh, Dr. Asmadi. Zaharuddin and uh, a few others. 
So the challenge is to, to access to them. Mm. Yeah, so once, once uh, you get access to them, you can uh, do the interview, right? What? Email, right? Uh, By email. Uh, during this uh, pandemic, uh, you know, it's almost, Virtual. it's almost impossible. Virtual uh, interview. To, to, to do face-to-face -face interview, right? Uh, you can do the uh, interview mm -hmm. you, online, right? Uh, the challenge, the challenge is uh, to reach them and to make an appointment. But I'm confident uh, people like uh, Dr. Zaharudin uh, uh, is uh, easily accessible mm. but the rest uh, i'm not sure uh, that that is the challenge yeah uh, i know some people who did uh, qualitative studies on high flyers in malaysia mm -hmm. high flyers means uh, those people mm. those are corporate leaders right corporate leaders those people who are successful in the corporate sector, those millionaires, all right? So uh, the challenge for him to, when he did his study was to find a suitable time mm. uh, to meet them. This study was done in um, 1996. 96, 97, 98. Uh, he finished his study. He's finished his study. But the challenge was to find a suitable time for him to meet those people. So I, I, I think like your challenge is the same. Uh, to, you have to be persistent, uh, you know, uh, to find suitable time for them. And of course, you have to be uh, prepared with your interview protocol. It means the questions that you want to ask, you need to show to me first to confirm the validity and re reliability of the, uh, of your interview protocol uh, yeah. so first thing you, your interview protocol must be ready and it must be linked with your research questions and your research uh, objectives uh, is it uh, uh, you mean about interview protocol is that guidance interview guidance interview right, uh, some right. question that we want to ask to the interviewer right uh, with the Export okay. Guidance yeah. is you can protocol. you can Google yeah. what what is interview protocol. Okay. You just Google what is interview protocol. Okay. And there is a guideline on how to guideline. construct on how to construct the interview questions. Yeah. Sip. And then uh, you show it to me. And like I said, the interview protocols must be in line with what you want to do with your research questions and your research mm. objectives. So the next Appreciate step you. is to find uh, how many, um, how many interviewees or how many respondents, the, the, what you call the sample size, and then the sample technique, uh, what type of uh, sampling uh, you want to use. Uh, so we, you must specify. Uh, I suggest you use uh, for sample size. I suggest you use the uh, saturation approach. You can write it down. For sample size of interview, you can use saturation approach. 
saturation approach. Saturation approach. Okay, let me, let me write it down here. Oh. So I just write it down. Huh? <laughs> you, you... I must Googling, right? <laughs> yeah, you Google. About the definition. you Google saturation. Saturation. Sat oh. saturation. Approach. Saturation approach. approach. Yeah. That, that is. Okay, saturation approach. Research method that using. So your sample, uh, your sampling size is based on sampling saturation. size uh, is based on saturation approach. Then you Google what is saturation approach, right? Then uh, uh, you also Google interview protocol. Interview. How to do, how to construct interview protocol. Interview protocol, right? Mm -hmm. These two things you can Google. How to construct interview protocol means uh, how how to construct the questions that you want to ask the interviewees and and then the uh, sample sample size the sample size i suggest yeah, sample. sample size is based on saturation approach then you google what is a saturation approach yeah yeah saturation and approach. then your your sample method sampling method Sampling method, you can use uh, sampling method is uh, snowball. Mm -hmm. yeah, snowball. snowball. I have sampling. heard about snowball sampling when I was a doctor yeah. program at University of Indonesia. Yeah, it was S1 itu. Lama If if you know if you know then it's okay. So you try to do these three things. For your method, right? You want to use interview, right? So for interview, you need interview protocol. Yeah. And sampling method, you can choose, for example, snowball sampling yeah. method. Yeah, I, I, I see and I understand about. Uh, and uh, for sample size, you can use a saturation <laughs> approach. Yeah. All right? OK. Thank so you, bro. Yeah, I well see and done. I understand what you explained to me. So let me remind you, your problem is to find the respondent. That is a, the challenge. And to, mm -hmm. to find suitable time for you to, to assess them, to reach them, and to have interview. So once yeah. you can interview them online, then your data is ready, right? Oh, okay. And then you can start analyzing. Mm -hmm. We will Interview. determine if, uh, you know, if, if it's enough or not. If uh, it's not enough, like we discussed before, uh, you might have to add another approach. So one approach that you choose is to use interview, right? As the instrument to collect data yeah if it's enough yeah. then it's okay oh. if it's not enough we discuss later but you can start with interview yeah bro uh, and you can think about other methods besides interview for example for example the library research you know and I, uh, in my opinion, I want to visit uh, to Malaysia, but it is impossible for right yeah, it's, now. It's, it's, in, it's, it's impossible because, right now. Um, I want to take field research uh, to the uh, uh, Basharnas or advisory or something like that in Malaysia. At it, it looks like uh, it's not uh, feasible. It's not... Uh... <laughs> It's not allowed right now. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, so, I understand. Uh, but another, uh, this mm -hmm. another method that I would suggest is to use uh, library research. Library research, okay. Because uh, the uh, in Malaysia, the library yeah, in Malaysia, library research. Uh, in Malaysia, we have, uh, for example, the uh, Sharia standard on Islamic banking produced by Bank Negara Malaysia. Uh, that um, explains some of the Sharia resolutions regarding the um, the offering of uh, certain uh, Islamic uh, financial products. Right, we have Sharia standard on uh, ijara, Sharia standard on. Um, Ba'usaraf, Mudaraba, Musharaka, Tawaruk, and others uh, that explain some of the uh, resolutions by our Sharia Advisory Council. So it depends on uh, the objective of your research. Uh, what, so can you tell us uh, the objective of your research in, in general? Yeah, uh, I want to make a comparison about the role of Basharnas in Indonesia and Basharnas in uh, Malaysia. Why? Because uh, for this recent time, uh, the transaction in uh, keuangan syariah in Indonesia and in Malaysia uh, growth and increase uh, day after day and time to time. So. Uh, I will uh, to compare uh, why because in Indonesia I see uh, the Basharnas uh, from MUE that's not too effective uh, chosen by the parties. Uh, uh, all of uh, the parties still uh, choose a religion court to settle the dispute. But sometimes uh, the parties uh, didn't have some satisfaction about uh, the decision of the court. So uh, it is. Uh, it will be better if uh, they can choose Basharnas as a forum to settle the, their disputes in a keuangan syariah uh, dispute settlement. Uh, you can also uh, interview uh, certain uh, lawyers. Uh, there are certain lawyers who have done studies on Islamic banking. Uh, yeah. We, we have here Dr. Uh, I forgot the name. Uh, there are certain lawyers who did PhD in Islamic uh, banking mm. and analyze the dispute. Mm. The dispute regarding non-performing loans. Oh, yeah. And uh, that's why I said uh, you can also use the uh, library research. Means you look at the previous uh, court cases regarding uh, disputes in mm -hmm. Islamic banks, right? Yeah, Islamic banks. Uh, in Indonesia and Malaysia, so you can add. So it depends. You can add your your objective. Okay. Besides comparing the role of uh, Sharia oh, Advisory Council, true. you can also That's add important. the second objective is, for example, to, to examine the you know, operational procedure of uh, the operational procedure of offering uh, Islamic financial institutions products right means mm. uh, legally legally all the products that are offered by rfis okay must go through the legal process right right so it it must comply with uh, sharia and also it must comply with the legal uh, operational requirements, right? Mm. 
Yeah. So uh, you can look up. Uh, I will show you how to find the uh, legal or the law operational requirements in offering the products in Malaysia. And these uh, documents uh, are written by the Sharia Advisory Council members of Bank Negara Malaysia. And if you want to interview regarding if the disputes, um, in settling the disputes regarding Islamic banking in Malaysia, there are also some experts that you can interview besides the Sharia Advisory Council members. Some of them have a legal background and they mm. are involved in, uh, in uh, Islamic uh, finance uh, legal disputes. Uh, maybe uh, in, we can uh, explore or we can uh, searching in the website of Sariah Advisory. Yes, yes, I will show, I will show you. I, I, will, I will show it to you later how, how you can search the, um, oh, the legal. Yeah. I will operation. give you some list. Yeah. In Malaysia, it is published and you can get it for free. Oh. The legal operational oh. requirement of uh, offering uh, products, for example, Ijara, Mudaraba, oh. Musharaka, Tawaru. Yeah. By Osaraf uh, and others. Uh, all these products offered by IFIs, Islamic Financial Institutions, must uh, comply with the legal operational requirements. So, those, uh, <coughs> those, uh, what do you call? Uh, those. Uh, lab, those are called library research, right? So these are the published uh, documents that you can analyze. You can also analyze uh, the court cases uh, regarding the uh, uh, Islamic banking disputes in Indonesia and Malaysia. So you might want to add a few other objectives, right? One, one objective is not enough for PhD. Yeah, uh, if I can share my screen. Again? I will show you about my chapter one. Uh, okay. as, uh, is, it, is it extending time or what? Just want to uh, show about the research question. Ah. Okay, we can discuss uh, later. Okay. Uh, there are three uh, research questions of my research. Uh, the first, how the party set of choice of law and choice of forum in international Sharia contract and how the framework of role of Basharnas in Indonesia legal system and how about in Malaysian legal system with comparative study and case study uh, uh, with some cases that handled by two or both uh, Basharnas in Indonesia and Malaysia. The framework of rule of and how, uh, the third about legal operational about um, operational procedure of offering Islamic finance institution Comparison about uh, the rule in Indonesia and in the rule in Malaysia. Yes. All the rule and how about the Sharia? In, in, in Malaysia, it is published. Yeah. The, the documentation is published, and uh, I can share with you, or uh, yeah, I can show you how to get it. You mm -hmm. can get it very fast in one day. You can get all the all the documentation regarding the uh, 
uh, operational uh, legal requirement. Yeah, the point is uh, how uh, uh, the board or the yeah the association or the board, the institution can implement can implement uh, the rules uh, based on the case that handle with the board, right? Yeah, we have the documentation. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have the Thank you, bro. Yeah, that one you can analyze the yeah. Sharia standard. We have the yeah. Sharia standard yeah. for. Interesting for me to make a research about yeah. this concerning yeah. one. We have a Sharia standard based on the concept. So, for example, you can choose which concept that you want to study. Yeah. Ijara, Musharaka, Mudaraba. Tawaruk, by on Saraf, by on Aina, by Bitaman, Ajil, and other concepts. There yeah. are many concepts that uh, are allowed uh, or permissible to be used based on Sharia and based on legal. Uh, so you need to be more specific, <laughs> otherwise it's, it's too much. Oh, we can yeah. discuss later. Yeah, see yeah, bro. I'll All do right. my best <laughs> to consult with you. Inshallah. Okay, any other question? Thank you, Prof. That's all. Thank you, Professor. Prof, satu uh, soalan sebelum tutup, Prof. Minta boleh, maaf. Boleh. Uh, sebab tadi yang awal tu Prof dah sebut cuma pasal kita akan buat uh, pembentangan minggu depan tu kita akan buat dalam uh, kita akan hantar uh, submit uh, paper kemudian kita akan buat dalam uh, presentation cuma saya buat uh, tajuk dalam bahasa Melayu boleh. dan isi semua pun dalam bahasa Melayu boleh. untuk presentation dalam bahasa Melayu juga kan macam mana Prof? Bahasa Melayu boleh Ah ok Prof Ok tadi tak kena cakap BI. Uh, bagus soalan tu untuk uh, assignment kelas ini assignment 1 assignment 2 boleh buat bahasa Melayu atau bahasa Inggeris. Presentation pun boleh bahasa Melayu atau bahasa Inggeris. For mix. Terima kasih prof. Uh, soalan final dalam bahasa Inggeris. Tapi boleh dijawab dalam bahasa Inggeris atau bahasa Melayu. Cuma soalan satu bahasa saja bahasa Inggeris. Okay. Tapi ja, boleh dijawab dalam bahasa Inggeris atau bahasa Malaysia. Okey, baik. Baik, Prof. Terima kasih. Sama. Okey. Before we end, any other question? Everybody is tired? Yeah. Easy to see? Eh, sure. It's hungry. Ibu Susi is hungry. <laughs> no. I'm praying I'm for praying. Ma the session was really very good. Mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, brother. Brother Abba. Thank you, brother. Brother Abba. Thank you. 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 Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.